This is Thursday, June 25th, 2015. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan, and our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today George Labarge, Sr. Welcome, George. Good. May I ask when you were born? 629-19. So you have a birthday coming up. Yeah, four days. <laughs> and where were you born? Uh, Worcester. And what part of Worcester? Uh, Main South. And what town do you currently live in? I live in... I live in Auburn. Your marital status? Uh, my, my wife's dead. Okay. Do you have children? Yeah, two. Grandchildren? Four. Four? How about great-grandchildren? Well, I, I have two, two grandchildren mm -hmm. and two great-grandchildren. Oh, okay. And you said you grew up in Maine South, in Worcester. And what was that like growing up? Uh, just like it is, but <laughs> What did your parents do for a living? Well, my, my father worked uh, in, in a shop for 47 years, Curtis Marble. What was that again? Curtis and Marble. Curtis. And what, uh, what kind of shop was it? It was a textile mill. And how about your mother? My mother did work. She, she worked. There was eight of us kids. <laughs> oh, she worked all right. Yeah, she had six sisters and two boys. <laughs> did your father uh, work through the Great Depression? Well, he got laid up, but he got part-time jobs to get by. What was that like growing up in that period? Well, we didn't have anything. <laughs> Um, uh, everything we, we made ourselves. Uh, such as? Well, like he made me a wagon, and uh, I made a water wheel for, in the, in the uh, brook. <laughs> George, did you go to school? Yeah, Cape Stone School. And how about high school? I went there, I quit in the boys' trade. First I went to South High. Then I switched to a boys' trade. Then after the second year, it was during the Depression, I went out and I got a part-time job to help my family. And what kind of work did you do? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, what kind of everything was everything? Well, I drove one way. He got a license. I drove truck. Then I, uh, let's see, I, I worked at a greeting card place. <laughs> a greeting card place. <laughs> uh, what kind of work was that? In uh, making cards at, in Worcester. Wow. <laughs> Did you get to write the little clever sayings? Pardon? Did you get to write the clever sayings? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see some of your work. <laughs> While uh, you were working part-time and all that, were you made aware of events happening in Europe and Asia at that time? Yes, I was. And how did you come about your news? Well, I, I didn't think I was right. What was going on at the time? But uh, I, I knew the United States was going to get into it a lot later. Before we get into World War II, you lived in Worcester during the hurricane of 38. Do you remember anything about that? Well, uh, Worcester Square was flooded. We had a man coming down the street in a canoe, so that's how much water was. 
And uh, I, I remember a big tree being blown down. I, I, my, my sister all crying. <laughs> Do you remember in September 39 when Hitler invaded Poland? Yes. And what were you thinking at the time? Well, I didn't think it was to Hitler. <laughs> He, he wanted all of Europe. What were you doing at the time when the war broke out? Uh, I was, uh, I was driving a truck. Do you remember for what company? It was, uh, the name was Houston. It was a, uh, a jump truck. Do you remember when Pearl Harbor was attacked? I, I was in the Army, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is, okay, so when did you go into the Army? March 20th, 1941. And why did you enter the Army? Who knows? <laughs> I, I just figured the war was coming, so I get in. What made you choose the Army? I didn't. It chose you? No, I, I went in the Army. After I signed up, I signed up for tank corps, and what's it would end up at, in the infantry. <laughs> So I was in the 26th Division. Oh, the Yankee Division? Yeah. Okay. Let's just kind of reel back a little bit uh, to when you enlisted. Did anyone else sign up with you? No. And where were you sent for basic? Camp Edward to Mass. Tell us what basic was like. I, I didn't mind it. Was this the first time you were away from Worcester? Yes. I, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I, I started racing motorcycles at 14. So wow. I went to what I know, New Hampshire, all over the place. Every Sunday was different. And you wanted to go into the tank corps. Yeah. But you ended up in the infantry. <laughs> yeah. Then they put me in the 181st service company. I was driving a motorcycle in there and teaching motorcycles. And where was the 181st based? In the 26th Division okay. at Camp Edwards. Okay, we're still at Camp Edwards then, okay. And you were driving motorcycles and you were teaching motorcycles. Yeah. That must have been fun. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what kind of motorcycles uh, you were using? Yeah, uh, Harley, Harley Davidson. How did you like them? I like both Indians and Hollies. I started out on Indians, then when they went out of business, I went to Hollies. And you, you liked Harleys? Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember, uh, the, again, the day Pearl Harbor was attacked? Yeah. And this what were, this mm -hmm. is my seventh. And what were you doing at the time? Just putting up equipment away. We were down south for two months on maneuvers, and we just got back, and we're sitting on the on the way a bunk in the barracks when they come on the radio about Pearl Harbor. Well, you said the war was coming. <laughs> yeah. Tell us what happened after. Well. It's, as soon as it come on the radio, they put a big sign up. You ran for the duration. <laughs> now, 
Now, you mentioned earlier you had eight siblings or seven uh, siblings. What, I, had, I had six sisters and two boys. Okay. So any, did any of your brothers or sisters join the military? Uh, one sister joined the uh, Navy. And what was her name? Irene. And what did uh, she do when she was in the oh, Navy? She, she was what the people that got wounded came back. She was working in the hospital. What, what do they call her? A nurse? Uh, she, she, she wasn't a nurse, but she, she used to work with people like that. Okay. Okay, let's get you back to your. Are you still at Camp Edwards? Mm hmm. And now you're in for the duration. Tell us what happened next. Well, they tasted it. They did. <clears throat> German submarines were sinking ships off our coast. So we went on coast to do duty to hold it from uh, Mass to Canada. And we, we patrolled the beaches up and down. For, then after that, we went to another camp, Camp Framingham. Right around here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were on coastal duty. Did you have a specific area of coast, or were you shifted? No, in Cincinnati, they took my motorcycles away and gave me a Jeep. <laughs> OK, that's something new. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I used to use. Okay, so you're in a jeep, you're patrolling the coast, looking for German subs. Yeah. Did you find any? No. <laughs> and now, okay, so tell us what happened after coastal duty. You're now in mm. Camp Framingham. Camp Framingham. Which is close by. From there, I went from Framingham to the Air Force. So how did you get from Army Infantry to Army Air Corps? Well, yes, the notes came out to the local area of letters. So I volunteered for that. That's how I got to the Air Corps. OK. You want to be an aerial gunner. Yeah. So you joined the Army Air Corps. Tell us uh, what happened. Where, where well, were you sent? Well, first I sent to North Carolina. Then they sent me to uh, Keystonefield, Mississippi, to my connect school. And uh, we had most of the B-24s. Is this the first time you had been to that part of the South? Yes. No. What, when we were down on maneuvers, I was in, in a couple of certain cities. Okay, so when you said maneuvers, that's far south you went, okay. Yeah. So tell us what training was like in North Carolina and Mississippi. Well, I, I, on the uh, maneuvers, I didn't know, I was already in, in train, so it didn't have, it, it was just maneuvers. But in the Air Force, we started going to school for, for, for several months. Okay, you had classroom training. Yeah. And were you also, uh, like, given drills? Well, no, we had what they called uh, chest shops. There was a real live motor that, like, it's on a B-24. But then they had a glass partition and blackboard. And they'd screw up the motor, and they'd say, hey, Lombard, what caused that? It's different things, you know. <laughs> what was wrong with the motor? OK. Yeah. <laughs> uh, were you given training as an aerial gunner, or were you kind of shifted back to mechanics? No. They, they, they shipped me to another air base. I went to Fort Avery. <laughs> uh, Fort Avery? Four air bases. Oh, Fort four air bases. OK. Four air bases. First, first I went to uh, 
piece of field at, at Mississippi. Okay. Then I went to fractious school at Ypsilanti, Michigan, on the air for B-24 East, where they, they made the B-24 bonds. Then after two months, I flew with a civilian pilot and co-pilot over to Waterless, Michigan, which was an Air Corps base. They took the plane over. Then I flew down to Birmingham, Alabama, which was a modification center. Then I had a 10-day delay to go from Alabama to Auburn to, uh, <laughs> uh, I think it was another center, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 10 days. So I went home from Alabama to Auburn, got married, and went back to the next place. <laughs> Boy, did you pile on the miles. <laughs> And we, we had nothing but steam trains then. So you're back in Auburn and you're married. What was your rank at the time? Sergeant. And you're getting all this technical training and you're definitely now a mechanic? Yeah. Okay. The 10 days in Auburn is over. Tell us what happened next. Now they sent me to an air base in uh, Galveston, Texas. Okay. I worked on, on everything there. I was a, what, what they call a 249 base unit. I worked on everything. B-24s, B-17s, B-29s, everything. And then it ended up, ended up they kept made our base a gunner base for uh, P-47 fighters. And they fired live ammunition at the tow carriage, tow by B-26s uh, over the Gulf of uh, Mexico. So you got to work with a variety of planes. Yeah. From, uh, you mentioned the B-20, the 17s, the 24s, the 29s, P-47s. Yeah. Uh, did you have like a personal preference? Well, no. But they, they trained me on four motors and ended up on one. <laughs> so I did everything. And then with the base commander had his personal plane, it was an ex Navy plane, and SB 2C, a Navy Helldiver bomber. And that's what he had, and they ended up calling that. Now, George, when you were in Galveston, uh, was your wife still in Auburn, or did she yes, get come? Yes, she came down there after a while. And how long were you stationed in Texas? Oh, about a year and a half, I guess. I'm sorry? About a year and a half. A year and a half. Tell us what Galveston was like in those days. It was hot. <laughs> uh, what did you do for recreation? Well, we worked on planes for seven days a week, so we didn't have much of a recreation. Did you go to the PX? Or? Uh, no. No? Movies? Uh, Mickey Mouse movie. I'm sorry? <laughs> Mickey Mouse movie. Well, Mickey Mouse, okay. That's well, something. They, well, there was, they show us all sex movies. What, what the, not to do and so forth. And oh, we, those we, kind of movies. Yeah, we, we, we call them Mickey Mouse. <laughs> okay. Yes, I've seen some of those. <clears throat> and do you, um, did you at least get to go to a movie every once in a while that wasn't uh, Mickey Mouse? <clears throat> uh, no, I didn't. You mentioned that you were working seven days a week. 
Can you describe what a typical day was, would be like? Well, we, first thing in the morning, we'd pre-flight the uh, plane. He had to sign their name after the British president was there already. And how long, um, how long was your day? Oh, I had to look at that, then to start flying. Mm -hmm. That was a pretty long day. Yeah. Oh, not as then always. And how was, what was the best way you got uh, news about the war? The current events. Current events. <laughs> that they, uh, have the whole companies congregate and they tell us what's going on. <laughs> Do you, did you remember any um, friends, com, uh, colleagues when you were down in Texas? Did I remember any? Uh, Do you have any friends or colleagues when you were down there? Uh, actually, no. You just kind of worked straight through? Yeah. All right, you have been in Galveston for a year and a half. Yeah. Tell us what happened next. Uh, then they shipped me to where? Uh, La Hunter, Colorado. There was another air base. And we had new P-47s. We would go to Okinawa, and they dropped the other bomb that was the end of the war. Can you describe in a little more detail what a P-47 is? It's a fighter plane. Okay. Is it a single seat, double seat? S single seat. Okay. And it's got eight machine guns, four in each wing. And did you remount, do you remember what kind of range a P-47 would have? Oh, about six of uh, miles. 600 miles. And how fast could it go? About 407 miles an hour. And what was the purpose of a P-47? To shoot down other Schumer planes. <laughs> Was it uh, used as an escort for the bombers, or? Was well, later in the war, they put on a, a auxiliary fuel tanks on the bomber on the fighters, so a company bomb the uh, bombers. That that what gave them extra range. Okay, George, you are now in Colorado. I take it it was not as hot as it was in Texas. No. <laughs> and what the, and you continue to work on P-47s yeah. until the end of the war? Yeah. Uh, well, before La Hunter, I was, I was a base commander's, I used to cool his plane. Okay. The, the SB-2C. And what was your base commander like? Who is a all uh, right, man. I, I flew with him from from uh, our base way down to Houston, Texas one day. He wouldn't have commanded a jeep. He just went down and got model airplane parts. Imagine <laughs> To get model airplane parts. Yes, yeah, we used to have the plane we were flying you used 50 gallons of fuel allowed. <laughs> but that was his personal plane. <laughs> and do you remember the, the base commander's name? No, I don't. No. I, and uh, I worked on the, when we left to get to the uh, model airplane parts, we ran up the engines. And I said, it don't sound right. She said, that's okay. It's good enough to get home. So when we get back, I worked on the motor. Then I went to him, I said, it's okay for a flight test. So he told me, he said, grab a shoot device. <laughs> so what am I gonna say? <laughs> 
So uh, we're with him. And we flew over the uh, Gulf of Mexico, and he's, he's had all kinds of maneuvers, you know, to test it out. So then he comes on into the club. After one appointment, I looked out and the prophet just began to go. I said, oh. He was what they called a star. And then we went over to dive and pick the speed. I said, I knew what he's doing. So he called me back on the intercom. He said, I had to worry the body. <laughs> Yes, he, he, he was all right. Interesting gentleman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so obviously you've heard, you heard about the atomic bomb dropping. Well, um, how did you find out about that? It was all over the radio. Which meant uh, the end of the war. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's uh, step back a little bit to earlier 1945. Do you remember hearing about uh, the death of Franklin D. Roosevelt? Yeah. And do you remember what you were doing? Well, what, when he died, he was at the, uh, the health center in Georgia, I think. And that's where he died. Yeah. What were you doing when you heard? I was in Colorado then. Okay. Did you hear it on the radio or for some of us? I heard it on the radio. Okay. And how about when, uh, just about a, a month later, victory in Europe day, when the Germans surrendered? Well, that, that was okay. That was, that was, that was, that was the uh, Japanese. Okay. Well, when the Germans surrendered, did, uh, did your base celebrate? No, we didn't do, do, do nothing different. <laughs> How about when the Japanese surrendered? Well, they thought it was okay. So then, since my ladder started up the point system, I had been there five years, and so, so they got rid of me. <laughs> they got rid of you? Yeah. When were you discharged? They flew me to, uh, uh, what was so real? The dead is just right, Jeremy. In 1916, 16th of November, 1945. And what rank were you? Sergeant. Still a sergeant. All right, George. Uh, did you use your GI Bill for anything, for education? Yeah, I mean. Oh, uh, after you left the army? No, uh, I, I just started taking civil service exams. And what were you studying for? Well, I went to po in the post office. The post <laughs> office, okay. And a uh, uh, post office out of what community? Uh, Auburn. Auburn, okay. And what did you do for the post office? Everything. Another everything. <laughs> I started as a road carrier, a foot carrier, a uh, distribution, a winter clerk, superintendent, and uh, ended up as a uh, assistant postmaster. Now, George, after you left, did you join any uh, service organizations? Yeah, I, I still belong to 109 Post. It's in Sturbridge. 109. And is that Legion VFW? It, no, it's uh, Legion Post. Legion, okay. Any other organizations? Well, I, I belong to, to um, Pasqua Night of Nature Clovis. Okay. I'm a third degree and a fourth degree. Did any of your children or grandchildren join the military? No. Okay. 
George, do you have any other uh, stories about your time in the military? I sketch about it. <laughs> Any, is there anything else that you'd like to uh, say before we wrap up this interview? Well, uh, I would say one thing. I think that every young man should put some time in his service. You learn, to, it's one thing, you learn to take orders. When someone tells you to do something, you do it. <laughs> George, is there anything else? No job. <laughs> all right. Well, George, uh, first of all, happy happy birthday to you. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> and we thank you so much for taking part in the Natick Veterans Oral History Project. Okay. <laughs>